So there's uh, been a really interesting project that's been in the technical space since 2009. And uh, basically in 2009, a network was launched called the Bitcoin Protocol. Yeah. And so um, Bitcoin is really misunderstood by a lot of people, but the most important thing about it is a very critical computer science problem was solved for with the invention of this network. And essentially, um, we now have something called digital scarcity. Okay. This is a really important concept to understand. Uh, digital scarcity is basically things that are completely unique and precious that are digital. And once we have this capability, we can build really fascinating applications, including digital money. Now, this is a really important topic because most people are gonna spend their entire lives in pursuit of money to you know, uh, invest in their homes and, and raise families and have kids. But most people really don't spend a lot of time thinking about what creates value. Why does the money that you have in your pocket really have any worth? And um, that's because of the properties that your money has. Your money should be hard to counterfeit, it's divisible, it's fungible, which means that one piece looks like another. But the reality is that paper money, the way that governments issue it today, is sort of really inefficient. And it's not designed for the digital age. And so if you wanted to invent a better form of money, you have to kind of ask yourself what properties would you need that money to have. And until you had digital scarcity, it was sort of pointless because we know that if I take a photo and I digitize it and then you copy that digital photo, yeah. it's impossible to know which one took it first, mm -hmm. right? And so until you had digital scarcity, you had this counterfeiting issue mm -hmm. basically. And so now um, with digital money, things like Bitcoin are possible and they're really cool. So Bitcoin as a currency has some properties that make it really interesting. There's a fixed and limited supply. So there's only ever gonna be a specific amount How of this digital that? currency. So there's gonna be 21 million Bitcoins, okay. but they're divisible by up to eight decimal points, okay. which means there's quadrillions of units, which is more than enough for us to facilitate a wide scale commerce for the internet. So don't worry about the 21 million number. Yeah. What's important though, is that the coins come into circulation in a very predictable way. This is really different than what happens with most forms of money. So when a central bank issues currency, like the Federal Reserve of the United States or the ECB here in Europe, they basically print enormous amounts of money. And then they give it to some banks that lend it to other banks. And each bank holds on to a little bit. And then they actually inflate the monetary supply because they create money through each time they do a loan. This is what's called the money multiplier effect. And if it sounds confusing, it is. They do this on purpose to obfuscate what's actually happening, which is an enormous creation of money out of completely thin air. Okay. So what happens when you own something and it was precious, but then there's a lot more of it? The value decreases. And this is what's happening in our economy. Our savings are going uh, out the window because the amount of money that's being created increases constantly. So Bitcoin is a total reaction to this type of money design. Um, and who, has, who came up with Bitcoin? Or? Yeah, so good question. So Bitcoin was launched as a protocol in 2009 um, by a developer who, def who named themselves Satoshi Nakamoto. We don't actually know if that's that person's name or not, but they open sourced all their software. So this is what's really important is it's kind of irrelevant who did it because now thousands of computer programmers all over the world have reviewed the code base mm -hmm. and improved it. So, and why, why do you think he did go remain anonymous? Why has he chosen to um, do that or she? Yeah, it could have been a woman. It could have been a group of people. Uh, I think probably because they didn't want to have the rest of their lives, you know, questioning the, their motivations and also the harassment that probably comes along with something like that. So I imagine it was someone that had a deep appreciation for their personal privacy yeah. and just probably wanted to see out of curiosity what would happen. Um, so it's kind of like who invented the wheel. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, we just know that it's useful. Mm -hmm. And this actually, that, that concept of utility is incredibly important. So. When you have a digital asset that is scarce, it's fungible, it's counterfeit proof, and there's a limited supply, we know that in the world of physical objects, if something is scarce and useful, it has a price. Mm -hmm. So things like gold and oil and resources we use to build our cities, if they're scarce and they're useful, they have prices. Mm -hmm. And that's why digital money has a price. It's scarce and it's very useful. What's crazy is that it's 2017 today, and we're sitting here in shortage, not far away from Bloomberg and uh, the, the biggest banks in the world, and it is faster to FedEx all this fancy equipment we have in this room to New York than it is to make a payment between here and New York. Mm. It takes three days to settle average bank payments. And what's happening during that three-day period is they're sitting on your money and they're earning interest. So wouldn't it be neat if in the age of the internet we had the ability to 
broadcast and, and teleport value anywhere in the world as easily as sending an email. Mm -hmm. So despite all the complexity of digital currencies like Bitcoin and their underlying technologies like the blockchain, the key thing to understand is that now we have the ability to make a payment anywhere in the world instantly, basically for free, with no intermediaries, no bankers, no Forex markets, no merchant processors. It's entirely peer-to-peer. -peer. Wow. So if you find value in being able to send your family uh, messages and text messages mm. anywhere in the world instantly, basically for free, now we have that for money. That's how it works. And so I was wow. paired with a technical uh, lead who basically did all of the really hardcore programming. And um, should we pause for a second? Yeah, where are we at? Sorry. We were talking about... Uh, Start over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>